Good afternoon to everyone and a warm welcome to this conference and to this summary of a plan for an international ecocide law in court. My name is Adam Sherson and my contact information is presented on the final slide. I'd like to begin by offering the theoretical foundation upon which this entire plan rests. This foundation is, if you will, the spirit of the law which follows. In this slide I will simply read the text, but let me add that the concept of global commons shall be defined in greater detail as I proceed. Humanity's relationship to the global commons is understood as a natural property trust benefiting everyone alive today and held as a constructive trust for future generations. Current beneficiaries may, in equitable proportion, utilize, consume, and otherwise partake of the goods and services provided by the global commons. No nation or person or organization may unilaterally claim exclusive ownership over any part of the global commons, or deplete or degrade the global commons unsustainably, or claim to be immune from the operation of an internationally approved system for the protection of the global commons. In order to enact and enforce this guiding principle, an international law of ecocide is hereby proposed. There are four main structural parts to this plan. First, an amendment to the Treaty of Rome is envisioned, making ecocide a crime against peace on a par with the four other major crimes against peace. The inclusion of ecocide into the Treaty of Rome was considered and then rejected in 1995 at a time when our understanding of the seriousness and the scientific validity of many types of environmental harms was not as urgent or well known as today. And furthermore, it may have been believed at that time that several conventions such as the climate change and biodiversity conventions would be sufficient to address the main components of ecocide and this is not proven to be the case. Second, a new international treaty of XYZ is envisioned. The place name for the treaty is to be decided at a later time. This treaty defines a law of ecocide and creates an international ecocide court for the purposes of enforcing this law. The IEC, as I will refer to this court, has jurisdiction over civil claims and is also authorized to refer any matter to the International Criminal Court for Criminal Proceedings under the Treaty of Rome. The system consists of one law of ecocide enforceable civilly in the IEC and criminally in the ICC, but only after referral from the IEC. For this slide, I will read the law and then provide some definitions. It shall be a violation of the law of ecocide for any person to cause significant and durable alteration to any part or system of the global commons. Person means any natural or corporate person, except that no sovereign nation or its agents shall be considered a person unless the sovereign or its agent is the owner or operator directly or indirectly, of an instrumentality engaging in such conduct. A person may also include a superior agent within an organization if that superior agent knew or should have known of the actionable conduct and did nothing to prevent such conduct. To cause means to be fully or partially responsible by means of an action or a failure to act whether such action or failure to act occurs within the global commons or outside the global commons affecting the global commons, and whether such action or failure to act was intentional or not, or negligent or not. The following definitions of significant and durable alteration include some nested definitions of terms that are used within the primary definition. Significant alteration means the introduction or removal of more than the allotted quota 
of a covered material or the violation of any international treaty pertaining to the global commons. Covered material, and this is a nested definition, means any substance, biomass, life form, element, chemical compound, mineral, or amount of energy. Allotted quota, also a nested definition, means the amount of covered material permitted to be introduced or removed as determined annually by the Global Commons Trusteeship Commission. A durable alteration means the continuing presence or absence of the alteration or of the effects of the alteration on the date one year following the final introduction or removal as determined by the Global Commons Trusteeship Commission. A word about the Global Commons Trusteeship Commission. One of the key elements of this and I would suggest any ecocide law is the creation of a scientific advisory body to provide the court with a regularly updated codification of the baselines and thresholds that define what is a significant and durable alteration of the global commons with regard to the various covered materials. In this case, the commissioners are selected at random from a qualified pool of environmental specialists submitted by member nations. This and the following slides describe parts and systems of the global commons in more detail and I will refrain from commenting to allow for silent reading. The standards shown here help define how the law will function. Only commercial or industrial activities are actionable. It would quickly exhaust the resources of such a court if it were compelled to hear cases involving, for instance, a private individual driving a vehicle which is leaking oil, or a family using a carbon-emitting stove for indoor home cooking, and so on and so on. Likewise, there may be instances where it is not the conduct of any individual person that violates the law, but that of an entire industry. For instance, a single oil refinery may not exceed a national quota by itself, but all of the refineries combined do exceed that quota. Thus, a case against a class of defendants may be brought before the court. Moving forward, Using the strict liability standard in civil cases avoids the problems of proving causality and or severity of harm which has hampered prior attempts at an ecocide law. And continuing, international legal norms require that scienter or at least a heightened level of negligence be proven to establish criminality. In other words, criminal intent or criminal negligence must be established. The crucial point in this slide is that the IEC may assert its jurisdiction over any respondent whether or not that person's home country has ratified the Treaty of X or not. This is because the actionable conduct is deemed to have affected the global commons, a domain over which the IEC assumes jurisdiction as a matter of international law once the Treaty of X has come into force. Continuing on, the treatment of state actors disallows the defense of sovereign immunity when the state actor or its agent is engaged in a commercial or industrial activity giving rise to an ecocide violation. This slide is self-explanatory.
for silent reading. These are a few suggested aspects of uh, procedure to make the court and its records accessible to the global public for silent reading. This si slide is also self-explanatory for silent reading. These are some suggestions for the court's formation for silent reading. And to prevent the making of an unfunded proposal, I have made a few suggestions as to possible financial arrangements for the court. Finally, I'd like to make some crucial uh, considerations available uh, which uh, weigh in favor of the proposed plan. The Treaty of Rome provides a precedent for the concept of a crime of ecocide as a crime against peace, and today's conditions uh, justify inclusion of the crime of ecocide in the Treaty of Rome. A new treaty initiative for an international ecocide law and court would serve to unify and energize the global environmental movement. Jurisdiction over the global commons avoids national sovereignty obstacles and accompanying time delays and allows the IEC to assume jurisdiction over signatories and non-signatories alike as a matter of substantive international law. A new IEC allows for environmental law and science specialization in a dedicated court. The bifurcation of civil and criminal liability allows for jurisdiction over real and fictional persons and the application of varying standards of liability in each case. And an international ecocide strategy is preferable due to leakage and outsourcing risks under purely regional or national approaches. I thank you for your attention. Please have a wonderful day.